I'm going to show you how to um, mount your portraits in your frames and finish the whole frame out. Just a couple of things that we have is we have a point gun. You probably won't have the pressurized one, but the, the regular one that we sell is fine. So make sure you have your point gun out. This is a tack cloth. Um, this will help to get some of the dust off of your prints and off of the glass. Then we have a trimmer. This is a great easy trimmer, um, and I'll show you how it works once we put the backing on. This is an awl. This helps to make the pilot holes for when we put um, the sawtooth hangers on. Then we have just a little screwdriver. Um, you can use an electric one like this one. You can use a drill or you can use a hand one. Um, and then we have an adhesive transfer gun. This puts the sticky tape on the back of the frame so that then we can put the backing paper on it. And this is framers tape here. This is the best kind for you to use to mount and grab. Um, it's easy to take off if necessary, um, and it is acid-free. And then we have just um, a cloth for cleaning the glass and some glass cleaner. When you get your frames in, you will um, see that there will, there will be a few points in here that will keep the um, mat and the backing in. And so all you want to do is you can use the awl or a flat head screwdriver and just take and lift those up. You want to press them back to the back of the frame because when you're lifting the mat out, if they're not pressed back, then um, sometimes they can scratch the mat. So be careful that you press them all the way back. Once they're pressed back, you'll want to take the mat out. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slide this down to Leah. She's going to clean the glass on both sides. Make sure you clean the inside of the glass first so it has longer to dry and your prints are not against um, anything that has any moisture to it. So you're going to clean both sides of the glass and I'm going to slide it down and let her do it while I mount the photographs in here. I always like to mount one at a time. And this is going to be a vertical presentation so I'm going to start top, middle, bottom. The thing that you want to do is take the framers tape and all along the top put it backwards so you have just a nice little overlap along the top there. I'm going to try to get it as even as possible, but as long as it's got some good stick on both the photograph and the mat, you're fine. Then you want to just slide it under here. And it's easiest to do it this way because then you can look at the print while you're centering it. And once you feel like it's where you want it, press the top down and just give a little rub like that. And that should adhere the tape enough that you can actually flip the mat over. So now you can flip the mat over, press it again. And then you'll want to slide another piece of, uh, of the framers tape about halfway down each photograph on each side. You don't want to go all the way around because, um, you know, everything breathes. So there might be some um, bending if you go all the way down of your photographs every time. It's not very likely, but this will keep them in fine. It will keep them where they need to be. And it's just one other thing to prevent when it's not necessary so you don't need to do it all the way around. And then we're just going to repeat that with the other two prints that need to be mounted. The thing that you also want to remember when you're mounting these is do it on the, the foam backing because it's very good to have carpet on your actual framing table to prevent any scratches to your frames, but you need something hard to press on when you're mounting the photograph, so it's good just to use that foam. And then it also can prevent any kind of sand or anything like that that could possibly get um, on your prints. You have a little protection there with the foam. Okay, so now that we've got all of them mounted like this, you can do one of two things if you have. Um, air pressure. You can use um, a, pressure, a gun right here that actually shoots air out to clean all of the dust off. You want to do that on your um, prints and on the glass because even though you've just cleaned the glass, there's dust particles that will land on there. If you don't, you can go to the hardware store and get a tack cloth, which is what this is, and then you can just very, very, very lightly brush. You don't want to press on it at all. Um, two reasons. You don't want anything to scratch it, 
And the second reason is if you press on it, this does have a little bit of oil in it and it will leave a residue on your print. So you just want to slowly go over it. And then just kind of check your mat too. You can just lightly brush. And it doesn't look like it's doing anything, but it actually will pick up any kind of dust particles that are on there. And then if you have the air pressure, you can use this. And we just use that air pressure to blow any kind of dust that's on there. And I'm going to let you slide this back down. Thank you. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just put it in the frame, being careful not to scratch the mat on any of those points, and then just push a couple of them down, and you want to flip it over and make sure that there's not any dust that you've missed. You know, that one's on the outside. Okay. Make sure that there's not any kind of dust that you've missed that's inside between the glass and the photograph, and I think that's good. So now that there's no dust there, you can press the rest of them down. And then you'll want to add more points in. This just keeps the mat in temporarily. You really need to add quite a few points to keep it in there permanently. I would do about every two to probably every three to four inches um, and that just ensures that nothing's going to come out the back. Okay, the next step is to add the backing paper. The first thing that you have to do is use your adhesive transfer gun and um, what you'll do with this is you'll press it onto the frame, squeeze the trigger, and pull back. And then you'll want to do a second row. Try to get it close to the edge of the frame so you don't have any of the paper pulling up. Sometimes on these guns it loses this on the guns that they lose the sticky tack and it doesn't adhere to the frame. Just let go and start over. It just kind of the tape breaks. It's not a big deal. All right, so again, press, squeeze the trigger, and pull back. And you're, you're applying pressure at the same time, but it's not really hard. Okay. So now we've got two rows of the sticky tape ready for the backing paper. To make it easier, I always try to let the paper be the longest side, at least on one of my sides, because that's the side I'm not going to have to cut, hopefully. And what you want to do is very lightly lay it up there, line it up pretty evenly, and then press the long side down, short sides, and then the long side here. Okay, so now it is actually on the back of my frame. Now we need to trim it. If you have a big leader like this, you'll want to trim it with scissors first because um, it, the little trimmer doesn't work as well if it has a big piece of paper to overcome. Okay, then you'll get your little edge trimmer here. I like to just fold the edge over because it gives me a clean place to start. You'll want to press it against the edge of the frame. Just give a little pressure where your index finger is and then pull back. If your blade's sharp, you should really just do it once. If it's not real sharp, you'll probably need to do it more than once. Now it has a blade on either end, so you could just flip it around and do the other end. I generally don't work as well with my left hand, so sometimes I'll turn the frame around, but either way. But it's good to use these because it gives you a nice clean edge, and it's not all squirrely. Okay, so 
so now we've trimmed it. The next thing to do is put bumpers on. The bumpers prevent um, the frame from scratching the wall and it also helps to keep it in place. You want to put just one in each corner. The last thing that you want to do is put your hanger on. Um, this is going to go um, in someone's home kind of high on the wall. So I'm going to put two of the sawtooth hangers on here. It helps to prevent any kind of shifting. And since it's going to be high, I want to make sure it stays where it is and it doesn't move at all. Um, one of the things that we like to do is just kind of have some kind of standard. So what we're going to do is just use the ruler as our distance down. And we're going to go four inches from the side to center. Okay. On these sawtooth hangers, there's a little knob right there, a little, can you see it? That's the center of the sawtooth. So I know if I want to be four inches to center, I measure four inches from the outside of the frame and put that little knob right there at the end of the ruler. So I'm four inches to center. The next thing you want to do is just, you know, hold it down. Make a little pilot hole with your awl. And then use your drill. To actually put it in there. Or you can use a little screwdriver as well. It takes a little bit of getting used to when you use one of the little power drills. But just press lightly at first, and once it grabs, press a little harder. Okay, so that one's there. And do the same thing here. And so that way when you know your frame, when you're hanging these for your client, you'll know exactly where the center of this is and that will help you um, decide where to put your hangers on the wall. So